and I don't know. Then I, I play skate, and I think skate uh, did a really. Oh, oh my bad. It did a wonderful thing, skate. Oh shit! Wrong button. It brought back the value to skateboarding because by the time I was done with Tony Hawk and by the time I'd finished getting you know those wicked scores, my combo was two minute long. Like straight up. It had a million manuals in it, it had a million different grinds in it, it had a million different kickflips in it. You were going up ramps, you were doing like triple kickflip 720s into some random grab, reverting into manual, chaining your manual into seven different manuals until you got to a grind rail and then as soon as you're on the grind rail you were in seven different grinds. Like You were doing a million stunts, so much so that it completely diminutized the value of a kickflip. And then when Skate came along, just doing a kickflip and landing a grind was something that looked sweet and was really difficult to do. So it took a lot of skill. And I think anybody can get good at Tony Hawk because it's arcadey as shit. But I don't think anybody, everybody can get good at skate. I think skate has a legitimate skill barrier. And it's a skill barrier that I found incredibly challenging but really satisfying. And I still think that Skate won. One of the hardest skating games I've ever played. Because there were moments in that game where I had absolutely no idea how I was meant to do the thing it wanted me to do in some of those later challenges. And I, I got super frustrated. And I'm sure a lot of people did. And then they brought Skate 2 out. And of course Skate 2 worked a hell of a lot better. It was a lot easier. It was a lot more user friendly. And then I think even Skate 3 was even more so. And they, they really hit the stride. But... Happening. As much as I respect Skate, I'll always prefer Tony Hawk because Tony Hawk, it represents that time in my life when I was in secondary school, I was getting into alternative music, you know, I was, I didn't even have a PlayStation 1, but a, a buddy of mine uh, called Liam, he used to own a pub in my village and I used to go to his house and he had a subscription to PlayStation Official Magazine and every single month that that publication ran, it gave you a demo. And demos were, come on camera, fucking hell. Demos were a big thing back then because you didn't just go out and buy games because you weren't old enough. We were kids. You, you, you got like one game a year if you were lucky. Some people got a few more, but for the most, you know, games were rare. Have I come out the wrong way? I don't know. So, you lift for those demos. I'm going to try a different entrance. I think I've done this wrong. And it was a really cool period because you were not necessarily less judgmental, but you were more open to things. And I think that's why I really liked achievements. Because achievements forced you, well I say forced, that's not the right term at all. Achievements incentivized diversity. It incentivized playing a game you wouldn't normally play, doing something you wouldn't normally do. And I, and I love that kind of thing in games. Uh, as I ramble and um, my sense of direction is really lacking right now. Because I can't see over the fucking maze. It's a maze. It is actually a maze. That's the zombie. Whoa. One would think if... I don't know. Ugh. They really need to have a crying baby. I don't know for that with Bloodborne. Another zombie there. Let's, let's see if this place leads anywhere. But Tony Hawk 1 was in that demo and it was I think the starting skate park and you got two minutes like you do in the, the runs this can't be right guys this can't be right at all and I'll never forget because it was the uh, Goldfinger Superman which is the the song that I massively gravitated towards and now when I think of that period in my life and I think of those days that song plays in my mind, and I just have images of us all getting super competitive at, uh -oh, at Tony Hawk's on the demo, and just having a ton of fun, and not really being any good at the game, but it didn't matter. Because back when you were kids, I don't think you realised that you sucked at games, or you were good at games, you just played. And you competed sometimes with your friends, but it was always like that friendly competition, unless you were an asshole friend. And we've all had a few of them. And also that, what 
what was that song? Like, Jenny is a race car driver, 42 years old. Like, I think it was Primus. Absolutely horrible song, but wonderful at the same time, because it just fit. It fit the game so well. Fuck you. Oh, yeah. But that's why I'm really excited for Tony Hawk, even though the level design... Whoa! That's a human! The level design does look... worse, somehow. And I envisioned, with all the new technology, essentially twisted metal-esque level design where you do stuff in the levels to open up other parts of the levels and it's all super evolutionary and awesome and cool and... It turns out, it just kind of looks uninspired and shitty, which is really disappointing because, like I said, in Tony Hawk's 3, the level design hit a pitch of just awesomeness. Like, some of the objectives... They weren't that difficult once you figured out how to do them, but it was the mystery of figuring them out that was cool as well. There was, there was so many different parts to it. Like, you did something to some guy's satellite dish and it gave his, his neighbour cable and just these little goofy things. And then that new game... Like, the missions are all about pushing balloons and jumping through hoops and stuff. It's, it's essentially trying to be Sunset Overdrive, which is ridiculous because... Sunset Overdrive is fantastic at that kind of stuff. Why would you ever want to impeach on that market? Like, The reason I realised I would like a Tony Hawk's game was when I was playing Sunset Overdrive and it looked wonderful, it played great, and the controls were tight. Like, that game plays wonderfully. It's not a high skill ceiling because it's really accessible and easy to do the shit, but it all flows really, really well, and the level design is really complementary to that style of game. And I was expecting, like, Sunset Overdrive esque, you know, awesome looking game, and we get this. It doesn't even look like the PS1 games, it looks like something imitating the PS1 games. Badly. Look at this, dude. Oh my goodness. This is the kind of N64 platforming that I don't miss. Where shit just looked goofy and weird and you were never really sure where you were meant to jump or... But, here we go. Why would there be three keys? The goddamn rule of threes. The rule of thirds. It's, a, it's got absolutely nothing to do with... Well, I suppose it does. There is videos and uh, screen composition in games. Uh. Uh, what exactly? I can't jump with the key. Is this door meant to be open? Is there something I'm meant to have done? Shit. I can't drop the key either, so I'm fucked. <laughs> Is this so stupid? Oh, I feel like an idiot for not knowing something would not work. What do we do? Ah, this camera is the worst! So, let's let's look at this. How do I go in first person? Here we go. There's some weird contraptions that I don't think I can mess with. There's a door over there that looks like it should be open, but it's... Let's... Can we get to it via this? Maybe I'm overthinking it, I don't know. Is there a better place to drop? There's a tap. There's a key. There's graphics going nuts and sending my eyes really weird. It's very tough to come back to games that don't look as good as Metal Gear Solid 5 or play as well, frame rate wise. Because that game is... Like, people say that on the Xbox One it's got frame rate stutters, and it really does. But... Wow, hook, line, and sinker. How the hell did I do that again? This is it, dudes. This is literally it. We are the vision of, of Dante Alighieri. This is where we are. This is what it's come to. And it just gets worse from here. But another thing that really put me off, like, aside from how buggy the game looks, and it looks like a big buggy pile of shit, it's the fact that it takes you out of the game all the time. 
Like, in the old games, you were in the mission and you had two minutes and you could do all the objectives you wanted to do if you knew how to and you could get really good paths where you could do maybe five out of six objectives in one run if you knew how to do it and if you were good enough. In this new game, they've segmented all the missions into individual instances and it has to load them and it, it just, it looks really stupid. Like, super fucking stupid. It makes no sense and... On, on one end, it's probably going to make editing it really easy, so that's cool, but I don't know if anybody's going to be wanting to watch it because it is, it's getting attacked and shitstormed and everyone who says something positive about it, there's, there's a million people saying something negative and I've seen a lot of people who say if you like the first three Tony Hawks and you can see past like the flaws and the, the bugs and, and things like that, then there's a really good game there gameplay wise but of course it's just it's, it's not as imaginative or as original as it should have been and i'm hoping that i'm one of those people but i probably won't be but who knows it could be the project that gives me a bazillion views and a majillion subscribers and i become the next pewdiepie only with actually you know ability in my gameplay and production Shoot. ah that's what you do there's a bone lever over there. It's so obvious, my god. How did we not see it before? Maybe not. Ah ha ha! I'm a genius. No, not I'm an idiot. I'm a charlatan and a fool. And this camera's gonna get me fucking killed. <laughs> Can we go? Dead. No, not dead. Thank you, Conker. Thank you for grabbing the ladder. Thank you for knowing to grab the ladder. We're like such a good team! Maybe not. Massive ginger buffoon. Right. Go around here. Thank you, thank you. That's exactly what I wanted to see. But I've also got Gears of War 3. 3? Gears of War the Ultimate Edition, sorry, which I have a ton of problems going back to play now because it's 30 frames per second and I've been doing nothing but play 60 frames per second game so the entire game moves like shit and it makes and it hurts my eyes and it's one of those things where oh gosh the human eye is a marvelous tool because it does this great thing where it interpolates footage for you depending on the quality of the footage and it adjusts wonderfully you can get used to 30 frames per second, and it can look good. Oh yeah, I forgot about those guys. Hmm. But if you're used hmm. to 60 and you go to 30, yeah. it can look fucking horrible. And it can give you headaches as well. Oh, it wants me to do something with the barrel, doesn't it? We're gonna roll on Mr. Barrel. Yeah, I thought we would. Can I get some revenge? I can. Go to Daddy. How dare you do the d d d d d d d d song in a video? Okay. But a lot of people have been asking for it. Oh my goodness. Oh, this got inertia. It's got inertia. It's totally got inertia. Motherfucker. Ah! Oh, the cavern is so bad! <laughs> there is no earth where I should have been able to do that. But I did. It's them Whoa. super monkey ball skills coming back to haunt me. That was cool. I'm so glad that that worked. <sighs> I got a chest palpitation just then, I think. I don't even know what a chest palpitation is, but it feels all palpitation y. <laughs> but a lot of people have been asking for it, and I've got to say this much, guys. I, uh. Can I get off this? No, I've got to go into the water a bit. I beat Insane on the Ultimate Edition without even trying. Like, I was watching Torchwood and barely paying attention while I was playing, and it felt super easy. The only thing that was difficult was the, the Brumac killed me twice, because that's the least experience I've got in that game, because I, I, I never played the PC version more than once, because I thought all that added content was really bad. But then I realised that you don't actually have to damage the Brumac, you just have to, once you blow both his guns off, and then you blow his top bit off, which can all be done, I think, with an active from a sniper rifle, which is what I was using. 
all you have to do then is hit the driver, and you don't have to hit him with anything good. So it's literally like three or four hits and you've won. So it's a really easy fight once you know how to do it. It's just, if you get in a bad spot, you're dead. There's nothing you can really do. The Brumac does too much damage, too fast. Is this not right? I don't think this is right. And then, of course, I got to Ram, and Ram was... Ram is always hard, but uh, I managed to get him stuck on the rock, which is really useful considering that it was the first attempt I did. I, I sprinted forward, I got into cover, and he just he just was super compliant, and I killed him in like a minute, which is always surprising, because that fight, to do it without getting him stuck is really tricky. Like, you need a shit ton of luck and a, and a lot of skill to just to understand how it works, but... Certain areas of that game just didn't seem like they were on insane. And it's not because I've got a bad memory, it's because I literally think that they've tweaked it. Like, Lambent Wretches blowing up and not one-shotting me and... Oh, no, really? So it's been a while, folks, so I don't actually know how to get out of this place. Just a lot of really questionable, suspect moments. Like, the residence on Act 4, you know the end of it, where you're charging through the courtyard at the back towards the the vehicle, and there's all the boomers turning up? I think there's two boomers now. I think they got rid of all the boomers, because I remember that bit being, essentially, you know, tuck your balls, hold your breath, and hope that you don't die. Not anymore. Like, I did that one attempt. I never do that one attempt. In fact, here's an example of difficulty for you folks on that game on Insane. I died more times on the initial prison door break. Why can't I go any higher? Than I did anywhere else in the game. There is an invisible wall here, and I don't know why. And you might be wondering, wow, how many times did you die there? Three times. <laughs> One was because I missed through a grenade, and the other two were because I I didn't do the grenade. I tried to do it with the gun, and trying to do that section with the gun is... Don't even bother, dude. I must have to use the barrel to get up the hill. Okay. That could work. Oh, oh alright. Oh. Maybe it doesn't... How come I had inertia on that hill and I don't have it now? Is it speed related? Oh. Right. <laughs> really good if I turn the camera over. I guess I can. That makes sense. You can't get up here until you use the barrel. That's why the barrel's there. It does make sense. I just had a an idiot moment. There we go. That is pretty that's pretty good level design. You know, a little bit of a puzzle, a little bit of an environmental challenge. Oh, there's a fucking money over here! Hey, what about me? Should twing. No, you, want some great stuff. you can actually skip these if you're getting annoyed at them. Because they do repeat, there's not that many. 